the National Science and Maths Quiz brought to you by Isway Loans, Kingdom Books and New Montgomery. Welcome to the 2018 edition of the National Science and Math Quiz. This is the eighth one eighth stage contest which features Anglo Senior High School. <laughs> San Dema Senior High Technical School. <laughs> and St. John's Grammar School. Contestants, the contest as usual comes to you in five rounds. The first round is a round for fundamental concepts. And I'm starting with you, Anglo Senior High School. Your question. Determine the power developed by the force F equals 2I plus 3J Newtons when its point of application is displaced uniformly by D equals 2i plus 2j meters in five seconds. Daniel. The power is 4 over 5i plus 6 over 5j watts. That's incorrect for bonus. Yes, Bernard. 2 watts. You are right. Your major question. Find the power developed by the force F equals I plus 2J Newtons. When its point of application is displaced uniformly by D equals 2I plus J meters in 0 0.5 seconds. Yes, Bernard. Eight watt. You're right. <laughs> Sandema, find the power developed by the force F is equal to 5I plus 2J Newtons. When its point of application moves with velocity, V equals I plus 2J meters per second. Kelvin. Um, Madam, we have uh, the power to be 6 Watt. That's incorrect. Yes, Baswa. It's nine watt. You're right. <laughs> Anglo, by the way, you can do this in less than 10 seconds, I think. All right, so Anglo, which is the most important property of elements that would determine the type of bond to be formed between them? Daniel. Okay, the type of bond is, uh, the property of the element is elect electronegativity and ionization energy. Hmm. I'll give you two. <laughs> One of them, it's electronegativity, that's it. Uh, St. John's Grammar. Name the type of bond expected to be formed between one, carbon and boron, and two, carbon and aluminum. Yes, Bernard. Between carbon and boron, we have covalent bond. And between carbon and aluminum, we have, um, oh, we have also a covalent bond. Two out of three. Yes, carbon and boron is a covalent bond, but carbon and aluminum is an ionic bond or an electrovalent bond. All right, Sandema, why does lithium form a covalent bond with carbon, although the electronegativity difference is relatively large? Yes, Calvin. Um, Madam, it's due to uh, the small size of lithium and it. Uh, high ionization energy as compared to uh, carbon, because lithium is, lithium, uh, is having a small size. Uh, lithium is having a small size, and two. 
Yes, lithium ion is very small, and therefore it has a high polarizing effect. That's the part that you were missing, and then you're going off on different tangents. All right, next set, 30 seconds. And I have a preamble to all schools. Preamble. The sides of a triangle lie on three lines. Find the coordinates of the vertices, given that the lines are... So now I'm continuing. Anglo. Y is equal to X plus 1. Y is equal to 1 minus X. And Y is equal to 0. Daniel. The coordinates are 0, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 0. The last one? 1, 0. Okay, so you have 2 out of 3. <laughs> Round 2 is also known as a speed race. What is the difference between the energy sources of chloroplasts? and mitochondria. Yes, Bernard. The chloroplast uh, obtains its energy from the sun, or the sun cells are the source of energy, but in the mitochondrion, ATP produces the source of energy. I'm not accepting it. Who rang next? Yes, uh, Calvin. Uh, with the chloroplast, its source of energy is from the sunlight. Does a, and with the mitochondria, its source of energy is from the food that is taken in that glucose, the food that is taken in during uh, oxidation. The food okay, that it takes okay. in. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> All right, next one. In eukaryotic cells, gene expression is related to the coiling and uncoiling of which structure? Yes, Calvin. The DNA. Yes. <laughs> what is the difference between a monohybrid cross and a dye? Yes, Bernard. A monohybrid cross is a cross that involves two parents in which there is only one difference in character. And whereas in the dye hybrid cross, the organisms have two different characters contrasting. Okay. <laughs> Next set, 30 seconds each. The length L of a rectangle is four centimeters more than the width. If the perimeter is at most 40 centimeters, find the range of values for the length L. Oh, the range of values, 4 centimeter less than L, less than 12 centimeters. So it's a range between 4 centimeters and 12 centimeters, exclusive of those values. All right, next one. Differentiate with respect to X, given Y is equal to X raised to the power negative 4, X raised to the power negative 2, and x raised to the power, no, let me do this again. y is equal to x raised to the power four, negative 4 plus x raised to the power negative 2 plus x raised to the power negative 1. Yes, Calvin. We have dy over dx to be equals to minus 4x raised to the power minus 5 minus 2x raised to the power minus 3 minus 1, minus x, that's 1x, raised to the power minus 2. Yes. <laughs> Next one. Use p 
parentheses or brackets such that the sum is correct. 2 plus 5 minus 2 squared plus 10 is equal to 35. Yes, which of you? Daniel. Okay. In a bracket. In a bracket. 2 plus 5 minus 2 squared plus 10. I'm not going to accept that. It's the way in which you said it. You have to be very clear with this one. So it's actually the bracket, you can open bracket 2 plus 5 minus 2, close bra bra bracket, all raised to the power 2 plus 10 is equal to 35. Uh, the way you said it, I didn't know where the bracket was ending and so on. Calculate the mass of aluminum metal that will be released after passing a charge of 0 0.3 Faraday. <laughs> Calvin. 2.7 grams. Yes. We are at the top of round three. This round has the problem of the day. Why is it that ecosystems around the equatorial region have higher biodiversity than those at the polar region? Contestants, this is your problem of the day. You may begin. Contestants, Anglo. Honestly, I had difficulty understanding what you were saying. It's very confusing. In fact, you start out giving the impression that it's a, you know there's biodiversity, then you start contradicting yourself. Later on, it was really hard. The only thing I found that I was even willing to consider giving a point for was that uh, you mentioned temperature. At the equatorial region, and so I'm giving you one point, one out of ten. St. John's Grammar, very eloquent and nicely written, but it's only one point, really, and even that is not complete. It's not complete. So you talk about the temperature, but then you are talking about temperature ranges. Uh, so you say a temperature range at a cultural region can sustain different species of organisms. That is your main point, and that is it. It's not even complete. So I'm giving you two out of ten. <laughs> Sandema, I had to combine your first and second points to get something about conditions in the equatorial region being suitable. And you, yes, you do mention uh, that they can survive and interbreed and all of this. So suitable conditions, but no details about what is causing the suitable conditions. I'm giving you one point for that. <laughs> then, then you actually go ahead and talk about the polar regions in your fourth point. That the conditions are unfavorable and then the, you mention temperature, humidity and so on. So I'm giving you the points, mm, I'm giving you two more points for that, and then that's it. So that gives you three out of ten.
Round four. In this round, I'm going to be presenting you with statements. When you receive a statement, please consider the statement very carefully and let me know whether it's true or false. I'm starting with St. John's Grammar, your statement. If sine of x is equal to 2, then cosine of x is equal to 5. Yes, Bernard? It's false. No, that's a true statement. <laughs> Sandema, if an angle in a triangle measures 180 degrees, the triangle is an acute triangle. Emmanuel. It's false, madam. No, that's a true statement. <laughs> Anglo. If the sum of the angles in a quadrilateral is 540 degrees, then it's a hexagon. Yes, Emmanuel. False. Pardon? False. Oh. <laughs> it's a true statement. <laughs> hey, people. <laughs> Believe it or not, all these statements are true. Go and find out why later. Hmm? All right. So, St. John's Grammar. The number of significant figures in a decimal number equals the number of non-zero digits it contains. Yes, uh, Baswa. No, it's false. Yes. <laughs> Sandema. A zero between two non-zero digits in a number expressed in scientific notation is significant. Yes, Emmanuel? It's true. Yes. <laughs> Anglo, trailing zeros in a number expressed in scientific notation are significant. Emmanuel? False. Oh, dear. That's a true statement. St. John's Grammar. During diffusion, Molecules move from a region where their concentration is low to a region where their concentration, concentrations are evenly dispersed. Yes, uh, Baswa. And um, it's false. Yes. <laughs> An animal cell placed in a strong salt solution would best because of osmosis. Emmanuel? It's false. Yes. <laughs> Passive transport does not use ATP to move molecules against their concentration gradient. Emmanuel? True. Yes. Oxygen and ozone are isotopes of the element oxygen. Yes, Baswa? It's true. Oh, dear. <laughs> they are not isotopes. They are allotropes. Sandema, hydrogen, deuterium, and tritium all have the same atomic number. Yes, Emmanuel? It's true, madam. Yes. <laughs> now, those are isotopes, right? Okay, Anglo. Hydrogen gas and tritium gas should diffuse from a pinhole in a closed vessel at the same rate. Emmanuel? Yeah. True. Oh, no. That's a false statement. They have different molar masses. Different masses. They are isotopes, but they have different masses. St. John's, the function y is equal to x squared plus 1 is an even function. Yes, Baswa? Madam, it's true. Yes. <laughs> the function y is equal to x cubed minus 1 is an odd function. Yes, Emmanuel? Madam, it's true. No, that's a false statement. <laughs> the function 
y is equal to x cubed minus x squared is neither even nor odd. Yes, Emmanuel? True. Yes. <laughs> Newton's law of gravitation applies to microscopic objects such as neutrons and photons, as well as to large objects such as planets and stars. Baswa. Madam, it's true. Yes. The gravitational interaction between the electron and the proton in a hydrogen atom is much weaker than the electromagnetic interaction between the two particles. Yes, Emmanuel? Madam, is true. Yes. <laughs> because neutrons are electrically neutral, neutrons in a nucleus interact with protons in the nucleus only via gravitation. Emmanuel. False. Yes. Fifth and final round. In this round, I'm going to be reading out clues. Your objective is to solve the riddles. First one. I got my name from two Greek words, which literally mean woman and house. My development and arrangement is important in systematic research and identification of angiosperms. I am often... Yes, Bernard. Placentation. That's incorrect. I am often referred to as the female portion of the flower. Yes, Emmanuel. Kappa. No. <laughs> I continue. <laughs> Flowers that bear me but lack stamens are called pistillate or carpellate. Flowers lacking me are called staminate. So who am I? Which of you? Yes, Calvin. Please, Mara, it's pistol. Oh, goodness. Okay, who was making the most noise? <laughs> Anyone? Yes, go ahead. Oh, dear me. <laughs> You're right. This is the gynesium, gynesium. Oh dear. Woman and house, and then you are telling me so many interesting things. Oh dear. All right, next one. I am a solid geometric figure. I am a polyhedron. I am formed with two parallel polygons that are connected at edges with rectangles. I may be triangular, rectangular, or pentagonal according to my base. I am used in optical experiments. Yes, Bernard. Prism. Yes. all the clues, three points. By all standards, I am nobility. But I'm not the only one in the family. Out of jealousy, a family to which I belong is described as group zero. I am a naturally occurring element with six stable isotopes and 15 unstable isotopes. I occur in the atmosphere to the extent of one part in a million parts. The fundamental unit of length, meter. Yes, Calvin. Argon. No. <laughs> the fundamental unit of length, meter, is defined in terms of a wavelength of a spectral line 
in one of my isotopes. So who am I? Yes, Emmanuel. Zeno. Oh, no. <laughs> Bernard. Helium. Are you raising your hand? <laughs> yes. Oh dear. <laughs> this is group zero. Group zero. Huh? So the right answer is Krypton. Krypton. Last riddle. I am an idealization that is frequently encountered in the study of solids. I am characterized by a regular repeating pattern in space. Even though many people think of glass of high refractive index when my name comes up, my regularity is responsible for the outward shapes that minerals display. I am derived from a Greek word that means ice cold. So who am I? Yes. Crystal. Now, you are right. Hey! Yes! end of the contest, here are the final scores. Anglo Senior High School has 19 points. St. John's Grammar School has 36 points. San Dimas Senior High Technical School has 40 points. Senior High School, thank you for being here. Unfortunately, this year was not the best for you. All the best. St. John's Grammar School, thank you for being here and for giving us such a good contest. All the best. San Dimas Senior High Technical School. <laughs> Congratulations on winning the contest. Well done. Prepare well, and I shall look forward to seeing you in the quarterfinals. Wow. National Science and Mass Quiz brought to you by Isway Loans, Kingdom Books, and Newmont Gallery.